Number 26 requires you to be quite familiar with changing the organic substances. So first of all, we have alkanes becoming a nitrile. What we can do is change it to halogen alkane. I put the conditions here for you to refer. Once we change it to the halogen alkanes, we can do a step up reaction using sodium cyanide and then we will have our final product here. So this is our intermediate which I put on the right side to refer. Here we have our alcohol. We want it to have a hydroxyl group and a nitrile group. So we have to change it to a ketone or a carbonyl group, oxidize it, and then we use HCN to step up the reaction. So this is the intermediate. From alkene to alcohol, actually we can do one step, which is adding of steam, hydration. But since they want two step reactions, we will add our halogen here first, HBr. This is our intermediate. And then we hydrolyze it to change this Br to OH. Here we have our ester. We want to get a smaller molecule. We will do hydrolysis using acid. We have our this part becoming the alcohol. We focus on the one that has the same number of carbons, one, two, three. So we are interested in this part, not the acid part. So three carbon alcohol. And then we replace this three carbon alcohol, the hydroxyl, with a Br by using PBr3. So these are the few conditions that might be useful. And for W and Y, we have the same intermediate. Okay, your halogen alkanes. Twenty seven, we have this molecule treated first with warm dilute sulfuric acid. So we look for places that will be able to undergo hydrolysis. This is the ester bond. So we will have cleaving here. And then this will be the hydroxyl group and then this will be the acid group then this product was treated with coal acidified KMnO4 this one will add across your double bonds here to form your diols it doesn't oxidize this to form a ketone right because it's coal if it's hot then it, the secondary alcohol will be oxidized not in this case, OH, 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 a diols. And then we have this final product, which is X. How many atoms can be displaced by sodium? So we look for the ones that can react with sodium metal. This is your carboxyl group. The hydroxyl group will all react with sodium. So we have total of six hydrogens that can be obtained. Twenty eight. Which compound is optically active and can be oxidized to a ketone? If you're unsure, you can draw out the structure butanol, butyl one or make sure the one that is joined to the hydroxyl group you is carbon number one. And 2-methyl will be this carbon then. Right? So if you follow the rules, we'll have A, B, C, D. And then what we can do, it's up to you. For me, I'll check which one is can be oxidized to ketone first. This is primary alcohol, so it'll be oxidized to an acid. So this is out. Secondary alcohols here will be ketone. And then we see whether which one has a chiral carbon. This is not a chiral carbon because we have two of the same groups joined to this carbon. So this is out. Same for here. We have two of the same groups joined to the center carbon. Here we have a chiral carbon. We have one group, two groups, a different group, and then a hydrogen. So this is optically active and can be oxidized to ketone.
what's the skeletal formula of methyl 2 methyl penta 1 or again make sure you number your carbons nearer to the hydroxy as number 1 1 2 3 4 5 so 1 alcohol and the methyl group is an on the second carbon the longest chain is 5 which is pentanol possible mechanism we have a slow step we have a fast step so we are looking for a reaction that has two humps this is one hump it cannot be this has three humps it cannot be All right we want two humps and then we look at the activation energy which can't tell us much be careful of activation energy this is the first activation energy if you are looking at C and then second activation energy most common mistake is students think that it is this one but it's not okay it's only this one this is the first activation energy this is the second activation energy so for both cases the first activation energy is less than second activation energy so that doesn't help us this differentiate between the two so what really makes the difference here will be the enthalpy change you can see that this is exothermic products more energetic than reactants this is endothermic okay and here we are forming a more stable product so based on that we actually choose C Number 31, how may nitrogen exist in compounds, triple covalent bond, uh, famous nitrogen gas, part of a cation, ammonium, oxidation state of plus 5, one example will be on nitrates. So all three statements are correct if you can find an example for each one. Thirty-two phosphide and sulfide ions. We do an easy comparison of their protons, neutrons, electrons. They have different protons, but sixteen neutrons and eighteen electrons each. So, statement one and two are correct. Thirty-three. Which substances have giant structure? Calcium oxide. Now, giant structure will be you no know, many particles joined together, like your giant ionic, many many ions, repeating structure. Calcium is a giant metallic, many positive ions, regularly arranged. Big clay is ceramic, and you have to remember it's also a giant covalent structure so all three are actually giant structures the default requires quite a bit of reasoning one gram of either X or YZ is reacted total volume is the same so Comparing number one, if we have the same volume of gas, we actually are saying that we have the same moles of gas. So mole of H2X of H2Z is the same as moles of hydrogen gas. And since they are the same moles, it means the moles of X is the same as your moles of YZ also. Because they are all ratio 1 is to 1. Since you have the same moles for 1 gram, 1 gram, it does mean that their MR is the same. Because 1 gram divided by MMR, you get the moles. So your MR must be the same for 
x and y z. Number two, x and y are metals. X, you can see that it reacts with acid, it forms hydrogen gas. So it's more obvious that x is a metal. How about y? Okay. Looking at some of the possibilities, it gives us a salt and H2Z. And if you do remember some of some examples that might be, this could be your cations. This is your anion. So we could have this to be a metal oxide. If we were to put this in as an example, then we have our metal salt. And then we have water here, H2Z, which is H2O. So it, it is possible, it is likely that the X and Y are metals. But must they be in the same group? Not necessary. Even though they form two plus charge each, this could be group two. And this could be a transition metals, iron 2 plus or so, or the other way around. Okay, so not necessary, they are the same group, even though they form the same charges.